Okay, fabulous. Now, I'm going to dive back into central administration. As you can see that there's a, there's a lot of detail inside of SharePoint and, you know, I, I can't cover everything in a one hour video, but I'll try and give you a quick preview of what these rest of these sections are. Something called as system settings, right? And under system settings, you can configure the various servers and you can configure services on the server. Now, these services are Windows EXE services. These are not the managed services. Managed services can use some of these EXE services, right? So for instance, something called as the user profile synchronization service is very, very important, right? So if you want your user profiles to be syncing properly, you need to go ahead and, you know, set this service up and, you know, start it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start that. There are a bunch of other services. Claims to Windows token service does not start on its own. So the wizard will not start it, but a lot of stuff in SharePoint will not work unless you start this. So I'm going to go ahead and start that one too. Uh, this sandbox code service is important if you want sandbox code to run, sandbox solutions. You should start this as well, right? So basically go down here and, you know, just start as many of these. Uh, request management service is very, very important for production farms. Uh, you know, sometimes if a server is getting unhealthy, uh, SharePoint now is smart enough to redirect your request to a healthy server. Or if you are deploying a farm solution and a server is going through an IS research, SharePoint will not direct request to that server. So you should go ahead and start these as well. So this is some basic maintenance that you should do on your SharePoint farm, even on a development machine. This is where you can configure the SMTP server, etc. This is where you can configure the alternate access mappings. I told you I'd come back to this, so let's dive into this. So you see here that on any web application, you can configure alternate access mappings and you can configure them for one, two, five zones. You can't add a sixth zone inside of here. Why would you want to do this? SharePoint is trying to move away from this, as in they don't like using AMs, but there is a lot of legacy code inside of SharePoint that Microsoft has shipped that requires you to set these up properly. For instance, like the, let's take the example of Excel services. Excel services will generate a whole bunch of JavaScript that causes Ajax calls and they don't use relative links, right? So they will redirect the link back to the URL that SharePoint thought the C sheet got rendered out of, right? So those Ajax requests must succeed and for them to succeed, they have to point back to the correct URL. Therefore, you have to come in here and change this AM to point to whatever URL you are serving your content on. This should not be the machine name. This needs to match the URL name that your content is being served on, right? And sometimes you may have more than one zone, right? So you may want to expose your SharePoint site, the same SharePoint site, on the internal network on a different URL and perhaps on a different URL on the external network. And here you would basically go ahead and add an AM, right? So you say add uh, edit public URLs or something like that. And you can choose a web application and you can define more URLs over here. Now you can't add a sixth one here, but honestly, if you're overusing AMs, you're doing something wrong. Right. So don't go willy nilly and start creating a whole bunch of AMs, especially if you don't need them. Right. There is something called as host header site collections, which allows you to expose a site collection on its own URL. That is a preferred mechanism over creating a whole bunch of external URLs. Right. So but but you have this facility if you need it.